there are still two other ways of getting menus that we want to look at uh, for ScalaFX. Last time we finished off by adding a menu button. This is a button that goes inside of the GUI and when you click it, it will pop up a menu. That has a close relative called the split menu button. So let's scroll a little bit here. Now, split menu button is a new split menu button. As with all buttons, we give it the text that we want to put in here. Now the difference between a split menu button and a menu button, the menu button when you click it, all it does is it pops up the menu and then you can select things from the menu. The split menu button actually works as a regular button, but it has a separate section that can be used for uh, popping up a menu. So we can set its items just like we did with the menu button, and we're not going to do anything more complex than we did there. New menu item split one, new menu item split two, okay, and menu, whoops, split menu, split menu button, layout x is 20, and the y will set to, I don't know, how about I go with 100, so 50 down. And let's add that into our content split menu button so that hopefully we can see what it looks like. Assuming I type things in correctly. In a previous video, I had imported the split menu button. So let's see. Overloaded method constructor split menu button with alternatives. Oh, actually, the that's right, the split menu button does not take the text, it just takes the items that we want to have in here. And it is a variable argument length list. So let's try that. Okay. And I can pick things from here. Uh, let's go ahead and let's set its text to be something. This one is a little bit backwards. We can actually, to see this, we can look in the API. We can look at the split menu button. And its constru constructor takes the menu items. And so if we want it to display something, we have to set its text. So, split menu button dot text equals a string of split menu button. Let's see what that looks like. So yeah, so this acts like a regular button. We could put an on action on it, but it also has the ability to pop up a menu and we could set actions on those menu items as well. The last way of getting a menu is a context sensitive menu. And this is something that you're all probably aware of. The idea that you can right click on things and get menus to pop up. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a label. New label and this label is going to have a, uh, a context menu so we can say right click for context menu will be the text on our label label dot layout X will be 20 the layout Y will push down another 50 so we'll put it at 150 and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a context menu. Uh, 
that is a new context menu. And like the split menu button, this takes a list of the items. Since it doesn't display any text, this is the only thing that really makes sense. New menu item context one, new menu item context two. And now I can set that to be the context menu on our label. Text menu equals context menu. Let's make sure our label is in the GUI. And assuming I typed everything correctly, there we go. So everything should work the same. I'm left clicking on this, nothing happens. If I right click, I get that context sensitive menu that I can select from. And of course you could attach that to anything uh, that's inside of here. Technically I could have attached a context menu to, uh, to these different buttons. That probably wouldn't make much sense. I could also attach it to the whole scene, I believe. Actually, why don't we test that hypothesis? So attaching it to the whole scene would just mean getting rid of the label dot. No, the scene does not have... Oh, <laughs> um, I would need to call it something else. To see if that works. No. Okay, so the scene does not have one. If we had a node at the top level, uh, we could set that to, to have a context menu so that you could click anywhere. Otherwise, you have to attach it to the nodes that you, that you put inside of here. So that kind of is the, all the basics for how you could get menus into your application. The one thing that we haven't done yet is we haven't made open and save actually do anything, and that is a good other topic about how you pop up file choosers, because that's one of the things you should do pretty much anytime you have an open or save, is pop up a nice dialog box where the user can pick what file it is that they want to work with. So we'll do that next video.